So, David, welcome. Great to have you with us. Um, if I leave you to introduce yourself, and then also just tell us a bit about where you're from, and where you're labouring, and what that place is like. Um, my name is David Berham. Um, I am an elder at Community Church in Chapel 100, uh, which is in Thurrock. It's the same place as my friend here is labouring, uh, and uh, we have the joy of partnering together sometimes in the gospel, but chewing one another on definitely uh, in all that God is doing. Um, yeah, I, I serve into uh, the church in, in Chapel 100 and into other churches of part of our family of churches called Relational Mission, which is part of the New Frontiers uh, family. Uh, so just in, in Essex, Kent, um, and into other nations sometimes. So that's me. Awesome. Thanks, mate. So um, tell us, how did you get started in sharing the gospel, making mm -hmm. disciples, and I, I think maybe beginning to help transition an established church? Yeah. How did you get started? So... I think it's always been in me. I was brought up in the Salvation Army, uh, so that's my background. And as a teenager, I was on the streets, going door to door, preaching the gospel. Uh, that was just in us as Salvation Army people. Um, and when we planted the church on, on, on the new estate, which was Chapel 100, uh, it was a mixture of, of believers that came with us and new believers that we were sharing the gospel with. So it was a real mixture um, of this church plant. Um, and, and of course, as the church grows, I think uh, things change. Uh, so we grew and grew and grew. We planted another one, planted another one. All of a sudden, I found myself managing rather than pioneering, which is where my heart is, really. Um, until my friend Russell uh, did something that I didn't understand, uh, which was he stopped. Uh, he's leading the church. I wanted to know why. Why are you stopping leading the church? What's going on? Uh, we talked and uh, went to one of the trainings with Russ and, and uh, Steve Addison. Um, didn't convince me, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't trying to convince <laughs> Lots of questions, but, but enough stirred within me saying, well, I need to listen to this again. Uh, and so I went to another one. I said, can I come to carry your bags? That's all I want to do is just come along, carry your bags, just hear it all again. And I think I did that three times before then I was convinced. I, I, this is what we need to do. It stirred again in me, this, this pioneer and evangelistic spirit to reach the lost, to share the gospel. Yes, we're missing that. We've lost it. Uh, and and um, loads of great things happened in the church. We had Alpha courses. We were seeing a few people saved and baptised. It was, it was not bad, but it wasn't, I don't think, New Testament uh, as far as evangelism. So it was that that started me off again about seven years ago. Um, just started uh, just going and do it myself. If I'm going to be expecting the church to do this, then I need to do it myself. And so, started with Russell, then went out and uh, just got on with it. Awesome. So, that's six or seven years ago. Yeah. You're still leading that established church. That's about, what, about 400 people yeah. Yeah. Um, with a few sites as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Um, across a local area, mm -hmm. um, but just describe for us any progress for you in this work of seeing disciples and new churches multiply, yeah. and and you know if you have a story um, that you could share from the last few months or the last year. Yeah. I, I think um, trying to transition an existing church to a, a new culture is hard uh, and slow, um, and so. So the first thing I did, well, not only I'm going to go and do this, but I wanted our eldership team, we work in teams, I, I need you guys to be on board here. I, I, I can't be going for something and everyone else is not. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that was the first step, is to, to, to either take them out with me, so they see what they can do, convince them of the importance, <coughs> and, and by God's grace, they all came on board eventually. It took a while, but they were <laughs> all on board. And, and so first, then I had the whole team saying, yes, this is for us. And then, of course, we can start to train the church, and, and, and it comes up in preaching and teaching. We've done some entry-level training with everybody in the church. And, and the whole, I think, uh, water level of people sharing the gospel has risen uh, from next to nothing uh, to a bit more than that. Um, <laughs> it's not everybody. It definitely, it's not everybody. But I, I, I think that the, the culture has changed. And there was, I mean, a couple of weeks ago, we heard... 
uh, someone just sharing the, the gospel when they were on a bus with the people sitting next to them. You know, someone in the hospital car park, you know, helping someone into their car. So oh, can I just pray for you and, and, and end up sharing the gospel with them? So it's become for us, I think, a bit more of a culture that actually we want to not only help people and serve them well, but we want to love them well by introducing Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so I can mm-hmm. see that change gradually happening in our church. Um, so much so, we're just starting a warm hub. Uh, again, uh, those are the, the, in the winter here in the UK, uh, last year there was this new initiative really to open up spaces for people that were struggling with the, the, the cost of living. And they come into mm-hmm. our uh, church hall and we turn the heating on and have soup and coffee, whatever they wanted. And we, we had an evangelist in there trying to, to share the gospel, and it didn't go down very well. Um, but this year, we're doing it again, and a deacon for social action came in that this year we're going to pray with every single person that comes through that door. Uh-huh. And I thought, well, that's a step. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a little step, yeah. but it's a step. And mm-hmm. it's just the gradual steps of actually everything we do is, is to introduce Jesus to these people. Um, and, and so I, I can see the culture changing. And as I'm serving into different churches, it's just wonderful to see how the gospel now, over the last, I think, five, six, seven years, the gospel now is forefront of everything we do. Yeah. You know, we used to be planting churches by taking a team of 30 and, and 100,000 um, pounds and putting a flag up in the city and, and, and drawing everyone to it. Now we say, no, we're going to plant a church by sharing the gospel. We're going to go into the harvest. We're going to, and so the, the, the whole thing is changing uh, in culture, uh, but changing with existing churches as well as the churches that are starting are starting on this culture. So we've got a few church plants, but they're starting this way, not, not another way. So, so that, that I think is, is I think exciting, um, but it's, it's still hard. There's still lots that don't get it. Um, yeah, but that's, that's just a few things. Yeah. So well, it sounds great, like you say, but... Uh, yeah, just describe for us a, a, a main obstacle or barrier yeah. for you, perhaps at the moment. Mm-hmm. I, I think that there's always this thing when you're in an existing church that, of those who don't get it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, mm-hmm. and, and, and even a few weeks ago, oh, we can't do that. We're too busy looking after each other. We're pastoring. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the main mm-hmm. thing. And, and, and I said, well, you're not pastoring very well if you're not taking uh, to the gospel, because you know? that's what Jesus did. You know, he didn't just sit in a room. You know, he took them out and, and they did something. Um, so there's always this, this little pushback that we're still experiencing after seven years. Um, and then when we are seeing people saved, um, we're seeing some, you know, being discipled, baptized and, 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 and into the church. Um, but we're also seeing some that are not. And, and so there's, there's, there's quite a high percentage of people that turn and believe uh, they start discipleship and drop off. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a real challenge. And I don't think, you know, I, I feel a bit of an imposter. Uh, I don't think we're seeing movement uh, at all, <laughs> let alone uh, signs of movement. Um, you know, maybe maybe one or two generations, but n- nothing much, really. So so that's a big bad. We've not seen this multiply. And, and that's something that, that <clears throat> if, it's, if we're going to reach our community and reach our nation, then that needs to happen. So that's an obstacle, I think. Yeah. That's really good. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then, uh, just describe for us a significant lesson or a game changer for you. Yeah, I think, and I don't know why, having been in church leadership since I was a teenager, um, I suddenly understood what the Bible was saying. <laughs> There's a commission. Um, from, from, from Genesis to Revelation, you see, actually, this is God's plan. Uh, and that was wow. just, and, and then, then everything you read, you think, well, this is what God is up to. Yeah. You know, it's about the gospel, it's about Jesus, it's about reaching the lost. And I think that, that just triggered something in me that actually, not only do I believe it, but I see it. It's in the Word. And, and, and see what Jesus did, see what the early church did. So for me, the, 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 this awareness of this is biblical, uh, not just the next plan, uh, this is actually what they did. Uh, and that, that is key. And I think as I've gone through this, I think, interestingly, my love for the church has grown, yeah. uh, not, not diminished. Yeah. As I've seen the, the beautiful bride of Christ, mm-hmm. and I've seen these lovely Christians, spirit-filled Christians, uh, that are potential labourers yeah. in this harvest. I, I'm, I'm drawn to the church uh, and, and want to serve the church, and want to stir the church to this rather than give up with the church. And so I think my, my love for the church actually grown through this process, not diminished. Uh, so yeah, I think there's a couple of things that I've learned. Wow, well thanks for sharing with us today. Okay. Really good. Thanks, David. Mm-hmm.